Hey gang, Steve with Guitar Center. Today we're gonna to talk about the parts of the acoustic guitar. We'll cover what each is called, from the headstock, to the neck, to the body, and talk a little bit about how they all work together to create the overall sound of the instrument. This is the headstock. Headstocks come in a variety of different shapes and sizes, and you can very easily identify the builder of your instrument by their signature headstock. The headstock is the home for the tuners, and the tuners have a small post here. The string goes through the post, winds around the post, and you use these tuning keys to change the pitch up or down of the string to get yourself in tune. I've got an example string here. This is a low E string. This is the plain end, which goes through the post of the tuner. And then this is the ball end, which we'll get into later. And the headstock ends here at the nut. Headstocks can have a variety of different angles or break angles, and that's the angle that the string crosses over the nut. And this can have varying effects on the tension of the strings and the playability. The nut is cut with a slot for each string, and this helps contribute to the overall height of the strings off of the fretboard, as well as the spacing of the strings across the fretboard. So when you see a spec like nut width, you'll be able to tell how far apart the strings are and how far the distance is from the low E to the high E. Moving on, just below the nut here is the neck. When we refer to the neck shape, we're often referring to the back here, and the shapes are often described as like a C or a D or even a V, and that's the curvature of the back of the neck here, and that'll be how it feels under your thumb while you're playing. The fingerboard or fretboard is a separate piece of wood that is glued onto the neck. This is often ebony or rosewood or maple, and it is the home of the frets. The frets are these small metal inserts. Each fret represents one semitone or a note. So if you were to just walk your way up a piano, it's the same as walking your way up a string on the guitar. The fretboard itself does have a shape. It has a slight curve, and that's referred to as the fretboard radius. So if you were to draw a giant circle right here behind the neck, the curvature of that circle is what's known as the fretboard radius, and it contributes to the overall feel of the instrument. The slight ergonomic curve across the fretboard helps with playability. In between the fingerboard and the neck is a truss rod. It runs down the center of the neck, and it's a counterbalance for the tension of the strings. As the strings are tuned up to pitch, they want to pull forward on the neck. That would raise the action or the distance of the strings from the neck. And if you tighten the truss rod, it'll pull back against the tension of the strings to keep everything in the optimal playing position. If you look inside the sound hole, you can see the end of the truss rod, and this is where adjustments are made, but it's only recommended that professional techs do that kind of adjustment. At the end of the neck is the heel or the neck joint. This is where the neck meets the body, and this needs to be a very secure connection. So often the neck is glued into the body, However, some more modern instruments do have a bolt-on mechanism that's similar to electric guitars. On the fretboard here, you'll see fret markers, and these are so you can get a sense of orientation of where you are on the guitar. They're often at three, five, seven, nine, and 12. The 12th fret is often marked with two dots and represents the octave, or the same note as the open string, 12 semitones higher. So you have the open string E here, and then you have the octave or 12 semitones higher E here. Fret markers can also be put right into the fretboard itself, and these are known as inlays. In this guitar, they're simple dots, but there are many models out there that get really creative with the materials and the design. And now moving on to the body, the body can be broken up into three areas, the upper bout, the waist, and the lower bout. Traditionally, the lower bout is wider than the upper bout, and the combination of these curves ultimately contributes to the overall sound of the instrument. The lighter wood that you're seeing here is the top or the soundboard, and in conjunction with the back and the sides, works together to create the overall tone of the instrument. When you pluck the string, the top vibrates, moving in and out in this way, and the air moving both inside and outside of the instrument is what hits your ears as the acoustic sound. A lot of people think that the sound comes out of the sound hole, and that's true. But a sound hole is more like a tuned escape hatch for air inside the instrument. Allowing the air to escape there while the top is flexing is a way to create a better sound of the instrument overall. If you look inside the sound hole, you can often see information on the make and model of your guitar. 
And you can also see the internal construction, which is known as bracing, and that helps give strength to the instrument. This part here is known as the bridge. The bridge has three main components, the bridge itself, the saddle, and the bridge pins. The bridge is literally a bridge of the vibration of the strings to the top of the guitar. The strings run down over the saddle, and at the saddle, you can set the string height and the intonation, and those are fine adjustments of just the length overall of the string. The ball end of the string that we looked at earlier goes into the hole here and is held in with the bridge pin. The scale length of a guitar is the distance from the saddle to the nut, and this distance contributes to the tension feel of the strings, as well as the distance of the frets from each other. Many guitars have a pick guard, and that's this part here. It's fixed to the top, and it protects the wood from pick scrapes while you're playing. On this guitar, where the top meets the sides and the neck meets the fretboard, is binding. And binding can have decorative elements like purfling or herringbone. Around the sound hole is what's known as the rosette. These decorative elements, like the rosette and the binding, usually work together with the inlays in the fretboard and the inlays in the headstock to create the overall look of the instrument. At the end of the guitar is what's known as the end pin. If you want to stand up and play with a strap, you hook it onto the end pin, and on traditional acoustics, you'd put a loop around the headstock and stand up and play that way. On lots of modern acoustics, there's also a strap button at the heel, and you can hook on your strap that way. So that's it, gang. All of these parts come together to make an acoustic guitar what it is. We hope this information gives you a little bit of help next time you're checking out specs online or trying out a guitar in the store, or even gives you a deeper appreciation for a guitar you already have. And the closeout is what? So that's it. That's every single part of the guitar. I definitely didn't miss anything that you should put in the comments. Much like the earth, the flatter, the better.